welcome back guys. So now we've got this guitar thoroughly taped off. Everything that doesn't get paint is taped. So the pick guard, the, uh, the sound hole, the tailpiece, the everything, fretboard, it's all done. Uh, even the back is all covered and everything. I really don't want to risk getting lacquer anywhere on this guitar that it's not meant to be. So I've gone over and checked and made sure that there aren't any gaps in the tape. I'm not worried about that anymore. We're good to go. Now it's time to get this thing prepped for paint. Unfortunately, I'm going to be covering up this, uh, this bit of detail, I forget what that's called, around the sound hole, but it's all in the interest of getting the, uh, the correct look when all's said and done here. And I'm actually uh, pleased that I don't have to mask that off because it would look kind of weird when all's said and done with the final paint job. So now it's time, as I said, to get this prepared for the paint. And how we do that, everybody should know by now if you've been watching my videos, is we need to sand it. We need to scuff it up a little bit. It's got a very thin finish, but uh, and most likely that finish is shellac, which is nice because everything is compatible with shellac, but it will be cured regardless, so it shouldn't really matter at this point uh, what that original finish was. What we're going to do is just give it a light sanding by hand with the grain with 800 grit paper. Don't go any smoother than that. For some reason, people seem to get the idea that if they sand down to like 2,000 grit or something that their final product's going to end up smoother. Uh, that's, that's not the case when you paint with almost, well, pretty much all paints that I use at least. Uh, the paint is more than enough to fill in 800 grit scratches. And the paint needs something to bite onto. If you're, if you're sanding your stuff down to like 2,000 grit before you paint it, there's, there's nothing for the paint to grip and you're, you're risking losing adhesion there. So I'm going to sand this with my 800 grit paper. In the areas that are very tough to get to, I still want to make sure that I'm sanding them. If I can't get at them with the sandpaper, I'm going to take my gray scotch bright and just carefully get in there with this because it gets around uh, in grooves better. So around the edge of my uh, pick guard here and right against the edges of all the other stuff, that's what I'm going to be using. And for the rest of it, I'm just going to go in by hand with my 800 grit. So I'm doing this carefully, gently, and with the grain. You'll notice, again, that I'm doing this by hand this time. I'm not using an orbital sander because I'm not trying to take finish off, really. The finish is right in there. I'm just trying to, uh, to make sure that my paint has something to grip onto. And now onto my scotch bright for these areas that are tougher to get to. Now that it's all sanded and ready to go, I'm going to give it a, a thorough and careful cleaning with some wax and grease remover. Obviously I don't want all that dust from the sanding to be in there. So I'm going to use a, yeah, a nice clean shop towel here, a little bit of wax and grease remover. Don't need to overdo it here, but we do need to make sure that we're getting the whole thing good and clean. Uh, you know, trying to avoid having any, any wax from your fingerprints, your fingertips rather, in there. And obviously you don't want to paint that dust in. So. So this guitar is now ready to paint. Um, the airbrush job going on it is in grayscale. And when you're airbrushing, it's typically better to start with your lighter tone and work up your shadows and stuff like that. So in the interest of having a good finished airbrush job, I'm going to base this out in white. So what I'm going to do now is put a couple thin light coats of white on there and try and get 100% and get coverage. So I'm going to mix up my, my lacquer very thin but a little heavier on the pigment than, uh, than maybe some people would uh, for your average job. The opposite, of course, is what I'm going to do for, uh, for the actual airbrushing. But to get my base on here, I'm going to spray on my thin white lacquer. If I don't get 100% coverage all over, I'm okay with that because I'm going to be coming in with black and gray and stuff like that after, and I'm trying to keep the finish as thin as possible. I'm going to mask up because I don't want cancer. And to be fair, if you go back through my videos, there are definitely times when I should have been wearing a mask when I wasn't. And I did some 
hopefully some decent explanations in those videos, but uh, now I'm gonna mask up, mix my paint, and spray this, and I'm not gonna be saying anything, so hopefully you guys like the background music that I put in. You should definitely be wearing a mask anytime you're working with lacquer, uh, particularly nitrocellulose lacquer and the solvent-based stuff. I have... Sorry, that's the heater. <laughs> I need to keep it warm in here for, for this job, so I can't really complain about that. Anyway, wear a mask whenever you're dealing with lacquer. I haven't even opened the can yet. I'm putting this on first. It, it smells like it's giving you cancer. Uh, I should also be wearing gloves. I don't have any, so I'm just going to be careful. But mask, gloves, cover yourself as much as you can because this stuff is actually kind of gross. Well, there we go guys, that's our base work done. They, uh, sorry for the noise, the heater's on again, but it's a necessary evil. Anyway, that's our very thin white on there now. I'm gonna let this dry, because lacquer doesn't care. I'm gonna let this dry for at least a week, maybe even two, uh, before I give it a light scuff and then tape it up to put the image on there. So I really wanna be, you know, play the better safe than sorry game here and make sure that I don't have to worry when I put the tape on there about it ripping some of the lacquer off when I peel it. So that's, that's the plan. Give it a couple weeks and then we'll be back for the airbrushing. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. This is looking great so far. I'm very happy with it and I'm excited to continue. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also a big shout out to Sovereign King who does the vast majority of the music for my channel way better on guitar than I am, and to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time.